Thank you, wrestling fans. We commence the tournament with a contest, the second semi-final for the Grand Prix belt of 1988. To be contested over a time duration of 10 minutes. No rounds, 10 minutes of continuous wrestling, and your winner will be decided by just one fall, one submission, one knockout, or one disqualification. Introducing and presenting on my right and in the red corner from Ashton Underline, welcome please, the master, Ian McGregor. And his opponent, on my left, in the blue corner, a warm welcome please for Yorkshire's dynamic young star, Greg Valentine. Referee for this contest, Mr. Ken Lazenby. Thank you, Gordon Pryor. Our Master of Ceremonies for this afternoon. So the first bout then, Grand Prix belt, 1988 semi-final number two, and they're already going before the bell goes. Now the bell is gone, they can really go. Ten minutes duration, one fall, one submission or an knockout to decide the winner. Greg Valentine from Millbank, West Yorkshire. In the white gear, white gear with the blue stripe down the blue and red stripe down the side of the trucks. And already loads of action here. His opponent, Ian McGregor from Ashton on the line. Both young fellows and great potential. Both of them. Roughly Ken Lazenby from Bradford. This, of course, if you remember back a month or so, you remember that the Pete Roberts, Terry Rudge bout never got to a decision. But of course, this one I hope will. We won't have, even if we have to resort to points, decision by a referee. So McGregor holding the grapevine, the near arm lever against the jaw. Still against the jaw. Lovely, lovely forward look. Somebody keeps shouting from the crowd at Ian McGregor. He keeps answering them. I don't know what they're saying. Do I shake hands or not? I, I would say possibly no is the answer to that, Greg. And he says so too. <laughs> McGregor wants to know why. Get on with the wrestling, says Ken Lazenby. And that's why he decided not to. Good posting, lovely posting from the whole crew around there. Yes, the foot came up right to the stomach, perfectly legitimate. To remember, only one fall decides this bout. One of these men gets a fall, he's in the final. Nelson to Valentine. Folding press attempt. No, he doesn't want it. Goes up with a four and grabs. Three minutes gone. Nice, oh, nice single arm suplex there by McGregor. 
almost gets the 40 once. Count of two. The crowd here, obviously, screaming to bring down a nice drop kick from a distance. The right foot landed well. Tom and Ankle spun out. The third foot executed. This promises to be a pretty good semi-final here, and why not? Both men very keen to get into the final of this Grand Prix Bowl 88. Four minutes gone. <laughs> Do you want to shake this or not? He still wants to shake hands every so often in the great way. I don't know quite why. I think we might find out in a minute. Double leg grab. Over the top, full Boston Crab to McGregor. Streaming to the referee to get the submission here. Come Watch on, for the submission. Yes. If yes. I know Greg Valentine, he won't submit for one of these. Ah. Look at that, look at that. Ah. Strength is trying to roll him out. If he doesn't want to give, it's not worth it. It's just wasting his strength. But he's produced a pretty good weakness there. Nice switch to the posting. Beautiful one. Follow up too late. And the left shoulder kill back. Back elbow. Backdrop. And Greg will follow down a bit late, but there's the referee warning him there. Not really part of the same move. Too much space. Less than four minutes to go in this terminate duration contest. We're moving the inside of the four round. Got him. Drop kick got him. Yes, and out goes McGregor right onto the deck. And now, what sort of a landing has he had? Seconds round to see. That is getting back. Is up no, didn't make it, didn't make the card of ten. And Valentine the winner and in the final. In just six and a half minutes of this ten-minute pound contest. Unlucky for McGregor. Ladies and gentlemen, Ian McGregor failing to beat the referee's count of ten. The winner of the Grand Prix semi-final, Greg Valentine. But pretty good bar. Pretty had finished uh, with another three and a half minutes to go because that was really something to watch. Valentine the winner and into the final of the Grand Prix Belt 88, which we'll be seeing, of course, on television soon. Right after the break, it's top of the bill time. Once Iron Fist Myers. I've just been told by the floor manager that England are winning Hungary 1-0. They've been them, it's over, they've won. Right, sir. England, the winners. Thank God we're good at something. <laughs> right. Now, what we're going to do now is fetch into the ring four supersized heavyweights for the four-man knockout tournament. Leading them into the ring, the giant of Birmingham, the leading contender for the heavy middleweight, heavy championship of the world, Pat Roach. Number two, international wrestling star from Wakefield in Yorkshire, Ray Steele. Thank you. 
Well, folks, I think the lift has had to go back upstairs to fetch the other gentleman down at 42 stone, the giant A stacks. <laughs> 40. And number three coming into the ring. The monarch of the Glen, Wild Angus. And number four, the largest wrestler in Europe today, the Giant Taster. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I feel very small in here. Stood amongst these four giants in their own right. And once again, I introduce them to you. Starting off on my left, Wild Angus. Number two, the giant, Haystacks. Number three, Ray Steele. Number four, from Birmingham, Pat Roach. The wrestlers don't know this yet, but this is how they've been chosen to wrestle. And both preliminary contests are over 20 minutes duration. And one fall decides the winner. One fall, one submission or a knockout. The first contest will be the Giant Haystacks versus Ray Steele. So obviously number two is going to be Wild Angus versus Pat Roach. And then directly after that, the two winners of the preliminary contest come in to wrestle in the grand final. Could I have the first two wrestlers, Ray Steele and the giant taste stacks. Thank you, gentlemen. Once again, to be wrestled over 20 minutes duration, one fall, one submission or a knockout decides the winner. Red corner, Ray Steel. Blue corner, the giant taste stacks. So the first preliminary contest eliminating contest I should say of this uh, super heavyweight tournament giant haystacks there he is from Salford Lancashire six foot eleven and about uh, 38 stone Ray Steele his opponent from Tingley Yorkshire Wakefield now 15 stone 12 he's just about getting up towards half the weight of his opponent Seconds away time. And these eliminators are 20 minutes each. One fall submission or knockout decides the winner who goes into the final. But there are no rounds. 20 minutes of wrestling. And the only break will be happening in the final if there's a, uh, because it's over two falls. But on these eliminators, only one fall, therefore no break at all. 20 minutes solid wrestling until one gets a score. And still, I don't know how he ever moves again when he get, when Haystacks gets him in that position. Steel, a powerful man in his own right, but against that, what can he do? Start with he can't breathe too well, I shouldn't think. The referee stops that arm from swinging upwards. But also the referee, Dave Rees, reprimands Haystacks for interfering with the breathing. So waist hold from the rear. They are hugging reverse by Haystack. 
and he's got to get the arms down between somehow. There's one. And maybe he can slide it upwards. Or make him quit. He's made him quit. But he goes for the stranglehold instead. Trying to lift that colossal leg off the canvas must be an impossible task, as you can. He weighs 35 stone plus. I wonder how much that left leg weighs. There's the bear hug. The right way round this time. And he's putting on the pressure, trying to get a submission from Steve. Following up with a forearm. Flying butt. That caught him. And another forearm, but he didn't reach that very well. Flying tackle, and Haystacks waiting to catch him. Slams him from it. And the splash, but he left, missed it. He missed it. Steel sidestep just in time. Gone out of the way of that flying tackle while his man is on the deck. And he caught a punch. He caught a punch. And Haystock doesn't like it, but he caught a punch. He saw him punch Steel on the deck there as he came in with a flying tackle. So in just three and a half minutes of this 20-minute contest, Steel, believe it or not, Ray Steel is the one in the final. Well, how about that? Three and a half minutes in. And three minutes, 30 seconds, the giant Haystack is disqualified. Disqualified. The winner on a disqualification, Ray Steele. Once again, may I repeat what the referee said? You are disqualified, dressing room. And once again, the winner, Ray Steele. Pat Roach, he won't run away. Well, there we go, once again, ladies and gentlemen, 20 minutes duration and one fall, one submission, or a knockout decides the winner. In the red corner, wrestler known as the Monarch of the Glen, Wild Angus. On my left, in the blue corner from Birmingham, Pat Roach. So here we go for the second eliminator for this uh, super heavyweight tournament. Knockout tournament, of course, and already we've seen giant haystacks of all people disqualified and Ray Steele getting to the final. Now, one of these two men is going into the final later this afternoon against Ray Steele. Which one will it be? Pat Roach on the right, Pat Roach of Birmingham, and Wild Angus, there he is. Wild Angus from now from Manchester, but formerly from Scotland, of course. Both men are around the 19 and a half stone. Nothing much in it weight-wise. Pat Roach, perhaps the taller, 
seconds away, time. And slightly the heavier. 20 minutes of wrestling, no rounds. The first fall or submission or knockout is the decider who goes into the final against Rasty. right over the top there in that arm lock there it is against the joint over the top but not right over grabs the head scissors Roach really wanted to get right over them, get out of the arm lock. Oh, monkey climbing with Angus. 19 and a half stone going over there. Side headlock, Roach. <laughs> Referee Dave Reese uh, looked after the last one. This time it's Jeff Kay on this eliminator. And warning Angus. that strap up here from a leotard that's all he wants for Nelson Angus trying to get Angus all the way over with a one arm then gets the arm lock now Roach in his turn He's got him back to canvas finally, really properly. The only thing he can hold him there, shaking his head, Roach, there, is to say, I'll never hold that. Goes for the double finger in the lock instead. So the strain on his face as he tries to haul him over from that. Roach goes right the way down their bridge, but comes up again. Angus doesn't go down their bridge. He goes flat back to canvas is where Roach wants him. But he tried this before. He can't hold him there. Full Japanese triangle hold instead. on the ropes three times four right in front of the referee what else can Jeff K do but deliver a public call the first public warning goes to Wild Angus first public warning so uh, 
quarter of the way through this uh, eliminator. Five minutes gone. And that leotard's trap is down again. The referee won't like that because of the tricks that Wild and Angus gets up public to. warning goes to Pat Roach. First public warning to Pat Roach. Attacking on the ropes when told not to. So one public warning each. Side of the forearm, bring it up by both men. There's another. Forge <laughs> nicely, knee drop by Roach. Beauty. Referee didn't spot it, but Loach felt it all right, and we all saw it from this side of the ring. And I'm sure the cameras saw it very clearly too. one more I think it's the second public warning to him <laughs> only just waited till he was up there and that looked very like another punch and he referee spotted that one the second and final public warning goes to Wild Angus and so Angus is, hasn't got any left Pat Roach has got one left if he needs to but I'm sure he doesn't need to was a slap rather than a punch that second one but I'm not sure about the one in the corner post Roach try a cross ballot from the man uh, uh, uh. Uh, <laughs> well Roach felt it again so he knows it was a punch but Angus trying to pretend to everybody that it was a forearm Lovely backdrop, caught him well. Follow up for cross press, two, three, he's got him. So Pat Roach goes through to the final in eight minutes, 50 seconds of this 20 minute contest and goes into the final against Ray Steele. In three minutes, 50 seconds, the winning fall goes to Pat Roach. And ladies and gentlemen, may I make a correction to the time of the fall, 8 minutes 50 seconds. And your appreciation for the loser, Wild Angus. Right. All right, look. Win. You want a bet high stacks, bet high stacks. Pat, we'd love to do that. We can't. We've got a program to do. And you must remember you're in the grand final. And if it's all right with you, you can have a 40-second break or just stay here. And we'll get 
the wrestler you into the ring who you've got to meet in the final. You want to continue? Fair enough. Thank you, Ray Steele. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the final of the four-man heavyweight tournament, and this time <laughs> have we wrestled over 30 minutes duration, no rounds, 30 minutes duration, and this time two falls, two submissions or a knockout will decide the winner. In the red corner from Wakefield, Ray Steele. And on my left, in the blue corner, Pat Roach. He is the Birmingham giant, the judo black belt first man against Ray Steele from Yorkshire. 15 stone 12, giving away exactly four stone to Pat Roach and a lot of height with it. Seconds away, first session. 30 minutes, two falls to decide. No rounds, just 30 minutes rustling. And if on a fall or a submission, there will be a half minute break. Otherwise, straight through. Is it too much for Ray Steele? One is naturally afraid it is, but one's seen him come away with so many victories against bigger men that you never know with this fellow. He's such a speed merchant, so fit. Ray Fine, Roach, with the side headlock as well. And he left the arm behind him, and he was grabbed quickly by Steele. goes over that bridge, tremendous power. Roach. <laughs> well, Big Pat Roach is just back from six weeks tournament wrestling in Hanover, Germany. Out of 24 wrestlers from various parts of the world, Pat was in the top four. Super condition, this fellow. 19-7, 19-stone-7. In Germany now, I think he's been up just a few pounds, but just over the 19 and a half. Again, the grapevine attempt at the side headlock to try and counter the double-handed wrist lever that Steele has on him. Still trying a backdrop. Oh no, he's thought better of it, and I think he's probably right. He had to go with him. And that polite Ray Steele helps his opponent back in the ring. So, there are too many public warnings in this final. Two, three, four. 
front headshots right now, Roach. Yes, that, uh, he really went in there pretty hard that time. Cross Bardock nicely, holding onto the arm lock. Now Roach has got to get him back to campus. He's got him there, but only for one. That shows the power of steel. Even though shorter and lighter by four stone. Still does pretty well in the strength. Finger into lock holes. Oh yes. And he came up right. taking a, an eight count. <laughs> Again, that fast cross buttock whipped over. And he's still got that wrist lever. Steel out of it, steals out of it, beautifully, nice counter. Head mare, but it didn't get Roach going far, but at least it got rid of him. And Roach grinning all over his face as he realized he fell for that one. So just five, that's the announcement from the timekeeper, five minutes gone, 25 to go. Two falls from inside this one, it's fine. Caught him beautifully on that knee drop. Favorite move of his, followed out of the cross press very quickly indeed, and it could be the first one, and it is to Pat Roach. In just five minutes, 30 seconds. The first fall to Pat Roach. In five minutes, 30 seconds, the first fall of the contest goes to the giant of Birmingham, Pat Roach. This man Roach, who runs his own uh, health club, of course, in Birmingham. And his opponent, obviously a little worried now, Ray Steele, giving away all this weight and trailing now by one fall. Seconds away, second session. So, can he do it? Can Steele come back into this one? He's got just about 22 or 3 minutes. Great fine, steel opposite arm lever. Not so easy to see by the trunks, both of them wearing black. But if you can see the faces, of course, no problem. Pat Roach, the red curly mop and the beard. power holes now. <laughs> yes, he's turning. <laughs> and he's turned him completely, just what he wanted him. The double arm. Now what method will Steel try, try now to get that equalizer he's after so desperately? <laughs> he's got plenty of time. He mustn't take any <laughs> stupid risks. Oh, 
Roach quite happy with that fall against the ropes, which gets him the break. But I'm not sure the steel would have made much of it anymore. Oh, I don't know if Roach has really come back from that one. The body check following the forearm uppercut. Going over the top for a forearm and an uppercut. Yes, he caught him beautifully, Steele, from underneath there, going for the further shoulder press. He's got it. Beautiful equaliser there by Ray Steele. Magnificent effort. And it just took him eight and a half minutes to get it. Now, ladies and gentlemen, in eight minutes, 30 seconds, the equalising fall goes to the Wakefield wrestler, Ray Steele. And we're still not a third of the way into this 30-minute contest yet. Eight minutes, 30 then. It was a beautiful effort by Steele. Saw, saw uh, Pat Roach coming in, grabbed the underarm, ducked beautifully quickly, took him over for a, a folding press, and he got a further one on him so easily. Seconds away, third and final session. So this is the final session. Now the next score is the one that matters here. And it's got, they've got... Uh, about 21 minutes. Well, let's be a little careful now. Roach not going in quite so fast as he was before. Steel dishing it out just as he's getting it. Catch hold, reach for a throw rather than a slam. And that's uh, the first chance. And looks like back trouble for a steal a bit there from that. Body check follow up, more back trouble as he lands. But it was a little bit near a rummage and bump. The, the Pat Roach speciality double arm. He gets a second chance at it as Roach loses balance. But he gets a foot right over onto the middle rope to cause the break. Unlucky for Steele there, and Steele looking at him a little suspiciously, as if to say, oh, that's an easy way out, brother. Disappointed there, Steele, because he could have had that falling first. Roach laughing all over his face, of course, but... Quite legal, of course, but... Uh, not really the Roach style, usually. I'm sure that Ray Steele knows all about the rummage and bump. He's going to get dropped face downwards from a great height. There's the knee drop. Follow down cross press. Almost. Got a two and a half there. But Steele getting the right shoulder blade clear. Nicely ducked out. Oh, those forearms are really vicious. Yes, he came off the ropes and he walked straight into that foot. That must have turned his head apart from hurting his uh, nose, I think, or eye. Clutching his eye or nose, I'm not sure. This could be the Bromwich and Bump now. And all the way down, onto the knee though, face down, knee drop, and it's Roach following up. Yes, that's it, that's it. Roach wait a little too much for the valiant efforts of Ray Steele. And in just 11 minutes of this 30-minute contest, final of this uh, Super Tag in tournament. In 11 minutes exact, the winning fall with his own speciality, the Bromwich and Bump. The winner, Pat Roach. Well done, Pat Roach, and well now, done, Ray Steele. Ladies and gentlemen, can I ask for your appreciation for the loser? Ray Steele. A good bout and a pretty good program. I hope you've enjoyed it as much as we have at ringside. And it's time now, of course, to be able to wish you a very happy new year. So from all of us at Oldham, happy 1982. And have a good week. Till next week.